Let's say you've discovered more than a dozen Revolutionary War cannon at the bottom of a brackish river and lifted them up out of the water. What do you do next? One thing's for sure, doing nothing will destroy the artifacts. If you take material out of the sea and you don't do anything to conserve it, it'll just, it'll deteriorate very quickly. That's why when archaeologists from Chronicle Heritage, under contract to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, recovered 19 guns from a 1779 shipwreck in Savannah, Georgia, they sent 17 of them to this facility in Texas to be conserved. Well, Texas A&M has a world-class conservation lab for such sites, and so through a competitive contracting process, they were selected to do the conservation for this project. This facility is the Conservation Research Laboratory. We call it the CRL. We are one of the, the larger and older uh, conservation facilities that focuses on materials from underwater archaeological sites. There's not too many facilities out there that uh, have the equipment and the expertise that we do. Any material that comes off of an underwater archaeological site or terrestrial site, uh, we can conserve here. Restoring these cannon for display is a complex, multi-step process. The most urgent requirement is to put the iron artifacts into a special bath that removes salts and stabilizes the metal. So what we're doing is we're taking the cannon and we're putting them into a vat filling that vat up with an electrolyte. In this case, it's uh, sodium hydroxide. And we're creating a circuit. So we're putting DC current into the cannon, and then uh, what it does is it pushes the salts out of the metal. It takes a really long time, um, upwards of, it could be two years in some cases, uh, to get all the salts out. But it's an effective way to get the salts out. The cannon come out of the vats for a short time so they can be unloaded. After more than 200 years underwater, there's no danger of the black powder inside exploding. But it's still important to remove the objects placed into the barrels before they were sunk. Step one is removing the wooden plug, called a tampion, that seals the opening. When these cannons sank, uh, they were loaded and they still had a plug in the end of them. So these are still plugged up the way they were when they went down. Next, you need to pull out a lump of old ropes called the junk wad, which sailors stuffed into the barrel to keep out moisture and keep their powder dry. Then, if you're lucky, the cannonballs roll right out. One or even two. This is a six pound uh, cannonball. And there's another one right behind it, as per usual. Then another junk wad. And finally, the remains of the bag of black powder all the way in the back. All the contents removed from the cannon are carefully measured and photographed by the archaeology students who work at the lab, and each type of artifact requires its own special tender loving care. Treating the paper for the charge bag, for instance, is a completely different process than we'd have to do for the iron. Different materials break down in seawater in, uh, in different ways. The powder bags, made of two-century-old paper, are especially rare and required the team to create a custom conservation protocol. This is not something that survives very often, uh, so we got really lucky on this. This is there's not very many examples of this now. And so what we're doing is there between sheets of paper with blotting paper on top, so we can do a slow, controlled dry. Elsewhere in the lab, archaeology grad student Alyssa Carpenter and a colleague use a noisy pneumatic device called an air scribe to chisel away things that have stuck onto the outside of the cannon during the centuries submerged in the dark, salty water. It's a really crazy feeling because when you get a cannon that hasn't been worked on, there are like mud globs over it. There's a lot of like mollusks and biological activity. And so when we're scraping it with an air scribe or with a hammer and then you hit the surface, it's a crazy feeling because you're the first one to see the surface. And so we just keep doing that and it's, we have no idea what we're gonna find. And that's kind of like the joy of it. It's dirty, smelly work from beginning to end. But the team members uncover more than just iron, rope, and paper. They also find a satisfaction that's hard to put into words. There it is. Ooh, OK. Working on these cannons, it's kind of emotional because I am descendant. I'm a, I'm a descendant from like people who fought in the Revolutionary War in the South. And to me, that's just crazy that I'm working on these cannons that they could have touched. It's just a whole experience, especially when you see the cannonballs and the junk wads roll out and you're the first one to hold them. Oh, 
starting to hiss. I remember when I was <laughs> the first one, John took the cannonballs out, and I just didn't think about it. I took them, and I was going to weigh them. And then, like, walking to the scale, I had all this gunpowder dripping on my hands. And I just stood there, and my hands were shaking a little bit. And I realized I'm the first one to hold these and weigh them on a scale. It, it's impossible to not be um, thrilled to be doing this kind of work. It's the ultimate behind the museum glass job, right? We're getting everything secure, so when it goes to the museum, everyone can go and see it and enjoy it. Um, but it's, it's a very satisfying feeling to know that you're the person that's helping preserve these for generations to come. It's, it's really cool. It will take another year or two to finish the work. Then these 17 cannon will be sent back to Georgia to be reunited with two unconserved guns already on exhibit at Savannah History Museum. In the meantime, archival research continues alongside the physical conservation efforts. It seems like every week or every month, you know, as we get more information, it reveals more and more about the site. It's a process. We're embracing it. We're enjoying just the journey of uncovering whatever we can about this shipwreck. Reporting from the Conservation Research Lab at Texas A&M University, I'm Michael Jordan for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Savannah District.